Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, how you doing today? This is lesson number nine of our databases and SQL video tutorial series. Today's lesson is going to be about the second half of the CRUD talk that we have been doing. In lesson number eight, we learned about the uh, C and the R in the CRUD operations, which is the create and reading of the data. And obviously today with the second half is going to be the U and the D, which is how are you going to go about updating data? And how are you going to go about deleting data? Those are the two things that we are going to tackle today. And as a little tidbit of information, you can remember that all the time, whenever we are dealing with our CRUD operations, we are always going to be specifying a table for these operations. So whether we are creating, reading, updating, or deleting data, any one of those four operations, we always specify the table that we wish to be interacting with each of these operations. Okay, so something to keep in the back of your mind while we move forward. So let's uh, jump right to it. All right, so first up is our talk on updating data. So obviously you've already learned how to create and read data. So let's learn how to update it. So the main parts to updating data is to specify what columns you'd like to update and obviously in which table, which I'd hinted at just previously to this slide. So we always wanna mention what columns, which makes sense. Think about a table. Think about what we have in a table. We have a bunch of columns that exist inside of a table. Inside of our users table, we have a username, password, and email. So if we are going to be updating the data, we obviously need to tell it which of the columns we wish to update. And uh, as you can see below here, in this example, let's say we want to change someone's password. Here's how we do it. So we say update users. So again, we say update and we tell it what table we'd like to apply these updates to. And then we tell it what column we wish to update. So we say set password equal to new password. So this is us saying, okay, here's the actual column that we wish to change. And here's the new data that we wish to change it to. And obviously we want to also say specifically which row of data we wish to update. I'm going to talk more about this where statement probably right now in this next slide. So let's break down the script. Like I said, first thing you'll need to tell it to do is to update which table. So always, always, always remember that table. And obviously next is to identify the columns we wish to be changing. These are pretty straightforward, not too big an issue there. But like I said, the tricky part is with this where statement right here in the second line, where user ID equals one. So obviously we don't want to go and update the password for every single row in the table. Typically, when we want to update a password, it's going to be for one particular user. Perhaps you got an email from someone saying, hey, I want to update my password or I've lost my password. Can you reset it for me? Or maybe you want to program this functionality into your application already and you want to tell your application, you know, how to go about actually updating the single row of data via which column, et cetera, et cetera. So like I said, generally speaking, we don't want to change everyone's passwords. We just want to change one person's password. So in order to do this, we need to specify which of the rows we would like to update. Okay. And we do that by referring to its unique identifier or the primary key. So that's what we've done here. We say update users, set password equal to new password. If we just left it at that, if we got rid of this second line, this where statement, if we just had this first line and we had our semicolon over here and terminating this line of code and we ran this script all by itself, what would that do? Well, that's going to say because we didn't add a where clause, because we didn't add any sort of filtering on this, it's going to go and update every single row in the user's table and set every single password column to be equal to whatever it is that we told it to set it to. So we set it in this case to equal new password, but of course we can put whatever password we like into this field. It could be password one, two, three. It could be password exclamation mark. It could be a whole bunch of letters and numbers. It could be whatever we like. But the point is, if we don't include the where statement, it's going to update every single row in the table. So that would be equivalent to someone in Facebook going in and saying, okay, I'm gonna update every single user's password to be whatever it is that I wish for it to be. And then it's going to go and every single user on Facebook is going to have their password changed. And you can imagine what a catastrophic scenario that would be. Clearly, they would need to roll back their database and try to recover the data from when it was in a better state. So this is actually quite dangerous to do something like this, which is why whenever you're performing an update or a delete, it is very important to remember that we need to use a where statement. I mean, unless your requirement is that you want to update every single row in the database, in which case, obviously, you wouldn't use a where statement. But more often than not, we, we need to make sure that we actually include a where statement. 
So I say here, do you see now why we have primary keys, why it's so important? Because we want to be able to isolate a single row every single time. And if we didn't have a primary key, if we didn't have a way to uniquely identify every single row of data, there would be no way for us to guarantee that we're only going to be updating a single row of data. Having said that, like I said, the WHERE clause can be used even when you're reading and deleting data. So I just said deleting, but actually you can use the WHERE clause when reading data as well. It's a filtering keyword and it is extremely useful in SQL. And now you can even filter down further if you wish to filter down even more and add more, obviously, filters to this, you can use additional filters by appending them to the statement using the AND keyword. So, for example, update users, set password equal to new password, that's nothing new, where user ID equals 1, and username equals tpage. So you see here, I've done two different sort of statements to make sure that I am for sure going to be isolating just that one row of data. Obviously, this is definitely redundant, but I just wanted to show you the use of the AND statement. So whenever you have a WHERE and you want to append a second or a third or a whatever number, I guess nth number of uh, filters, you always use the AND. So you can say AND username equals Steve page, and password equals whatever the old password was, and email equals, you can just keep on going and keep on filtering down to your heart's content, I suppose. So to further explain this, if you were to use a filter and there was no match, it wouldn't update any rows. So for example, if we're updating the password in the users table and we said where user ID equals, I don't know, 500, okay? And we ran that statement. Well, because it's gonna filter and try to find the record first, it's gonna look for user ID 500. And let's say that user ID 500 does not exist. Well, then it would not update any rows. There would be no change to the database. That's just something interesting and uh, useful to understand. So having said that, let's move on to deleting data. Updating data is fairly straightforward. As you saw, the only curveball really is in the where statement. So the final piece of the CRUD puzzle is deleting data. So thankfully, the keyword we can use here is delete. Just like in update, it's update, and in delete, it's delete. Whereas with read, it's select. Remember, I told you to embed that into your mind. Reading is select. Select is reading. Always, always remember that. Very, very important very useful to remember that. And when we're creating data, we use the insert keyword. So create is insert, read is select, update is update, delete is delete. So I guess uh, two out of four ain't bad. So here's how we delete stuff. So we say delete from table, which is users, where user ID equals one. So some notes on syntax here. Oftentimes I would get confused with the delete because I would always forget to put the from. Or maybe it was the other way around. If I go back one slide here, maybe it's the update. Maybe I would always put the from keyword with the update. I would say update from users. Because you say select star from users if you're reading data. Uh, you say insert into, which kind of makes sense. And you say delete from. So clearly with update, I feel like there's more, another keyword I should be using before the name of the table, but there's not. So maybe it's the uh, update statement I used to get confused with. It's hard for me to, you know, go back into my old self. I remember what my old errors were, but uh, in any case, I just thought I'd mention that there could be a little gotcha there. You might feel like you want to put an extra keyword in there, but you don't need to. In any case, you say delete from table name, and then you put your where clause. Again, I say we make use of the where keyword to delete the entire row of data where user ID is equal to one. So if we did not include where user ID equals one, if we just said delete from users, that would be an even more catastrophic scenario. Again, think back to Facebook. If we just said delete from users, what that's telling it to do is delete every single row in the users table. So we're not just changing passwords here, we're deleting the entire table. We're deleting, not the table, sorry, we're deleting all the data within the table when we say delete from users. Sometimes we want to do that, but definitely we usually don't want to do that in a real live, what we call production environment. So in any case, very useful, very important to remember to put the where clause on the end of any delete or any update statement. So you know you're only going to be touching one row at a time. So like I said, if you wanted to delete all the rows from the users table, we would just omit the where clause. We'd say delete from users and put our semicolon and that would delete everything from the users table. Okay, not too bad, right? Not too complex. Just that where clause is the only thing that kind of is the curveball here. So now let's finish by taking a look at some real world examples. So I'm going to go back to my 
SQL window here. So I've already logged into my SQL prompt. So I'm ready to go. I'm ready to do some stuff. And I've already said, use my test DB. Okay, I've already done that, but I can do it again just to show you that we are using the my test DB. Always need to remember to tell it what database to be using. So how do we do what it is that we want to do? Well, first thing I'm going to do is say select star from users because I want to take a look at what users I have in there right now. So from our last talk, we had these two rows of data, tpage and jdoe, and some passwords. But you see here that the passwords are the same for both users. So let's change one of those. Let's change the password for the jdoe row. So how do we do that? Well, like I said, update. And then we say, again, sometimes I'd want to say from, but you don't say from. So that's incorrect. What you say is update and then the table name. So I'm saying update the users table. And then I need to tell it what columns to modify. So I want to say set the password column, because that's the name of the column is password. So set password equal to, let's say we want to change the password to say, I don't know, um, let's say password exclamation mark. So set password equal to password exclamation mark. So if I just ran this statement now, like so, it would update every single row in the table. That's bad. We don't want to do that. So I'm going to take away the semicolon. I'm going to hit enter. So because I didn't put the semicolon there, it's not going to execute the statement just yet. And I'm going to add my where clause. I'll say where user ID equals two. Okay, so you see what I'm doing? I'm saying I want to update user ID two's row. I'm going to set the password equal to this new value. And I'll say enter. So there you go. It says query OK. So now let's select from the table again and take a look at our changes. And as you can see, sure enough, it used to be password one, two, three, and now it's password exclamation mark. OK, and to show you what I've been talking about, the potentially catastrophic situation of updating every single row, I can show you exactly what that looks like. So I'll say update to users, set password equal to, and let me just say, uh oh, and then that's it. I will just execute that. So what you see is it says, two rows affected, where previously it said one row affected. So here it gives us an indication of, of what was actually changed. So now if we say select star from users, we see that all of the users, potentially all, you know, if we had had more rows, it would have been more catastrophic. But since we only have two rows, it's not that bad. But you see it's changed all the passwords. So that's just the dangerous scenario. You always need to make sure that you include the where statement. Now, having said that, you might be a little bit confused about the where statement. Um, let me say update user set password equal to, I'll say password one, two, three. And I'm going to say where, and instead of saying user ID, you might be confused thinking you can only use user ID, but that's not exactly true. You can use whatever column you like on the where clause. So you could say where username equals T page. Now, this is still perfectly valid, but since we're not using the primary key, this is where it gets a little bit more tricky. You can't guarantee that this is going to return a unique row because we haven't done anything to this table to enforce the uniqueness of the username column. All we've done is force the uniqueness of a row is, is to make the primary key table or primary key column uh, a primary key. So that's the only column that has any sort of data enforcing going on. All the other columns, when we created a table, we did not specify anything special. So this is potentially a dangerous statement. You could potentially update more than one row if we had another row in here where the username was tpage. So perhaps I'll show you that exactly what I'm talking about. So let me see. Oh, what, what's wrong here? My test. Uh, oh, I said update user, not users. My apologies. Update users. And then I will say where username equals tpage. And you see, in any case, with all my warnings and everything, it only updated one row, which is exactly what we expected to see. So we could say select star from users. And you see it updated tpage, the password to be password123, as we expected. But here is the scenario I'm talking about. If we were to insert into uh, the users table, and we said user ID, username, password, email address, and we said values. Remember, this is how we insert data. We use the values keyword. And we'll say user ID 3, username. Let's do a duplicate. So now I'm purposely putting in T page again. Okay, that's going to be a duplicate, which is technically a bad thing. I should have put more what they call constraints on this table to make sure that username was unique. But we did not do that because you don't know how to do that yet. So don't worry too much about it. But let's do, I don't know, again, password, maybe exclamation mark. And the email address is, let's say, trevor at gmail.com. 
not actually my email address, so please do not send any email to that address. So now select star from users to make sure that we see that row in there. So you see we have two different T pages in here now. So if I go back and I run my update users set password equal to, let's say something unique, we'll just say something unique. And then we say, where was it? Where username equals T page. Now, because I have two rows that are named T page with a username, this is what I'm talking about. This is now a dangerous scenario. You're saying where username equals T page, you're not specifying a unique a type of identifier with the where statement. So this is where you could update more rows than you meant to. So if I say enter, there you go. It updated two rows. So that's not what we would have expected if we did not realize we had a duplicate username with T page in it. So now if we say select star from users, we'll see that T pages, both of them got updated to something unique. Okay. So that's why it's important. And hopefully again, you're banging your head against a keyboard or something saying, I get it. I get it for the love of God, move on Trevor. But uh, Hey, this is how I teach. I want to make sure that you guys get this. So if I were to say update users set password equal to, let's say password one, two, three again. And then I said where user ID equals three. Now it's only going to change one row. Okay. And you see, I'm sure you can understand why it only changed one row there because we were using the unique identifier of the user ID, which means we only changed one row of data, which is what we expected. So fantastic. Now to finish things off, let's do the delete. So we can say delete from users. Now, if I were to run this statement, it would delete everything in the table. That's not what we want to do. So I want to keep on going with that. So I'll say enter without the uh, semicolon. I'll say delete from users where user ID equals three. So hopefully you understand what, what's going on there. What's going to happen is it's going to delete the row of data where user ID is equal to three. So we're going to delete the entire second row of T pages data. Okay. Let's give it a shot. Query. Okay. One row affected. That's what we expected to see. Select start from users and there you go. Voila. It is now gone. Cool. And obviously if I were to say delete from users like this, it would delete absolutely everything in the table, but I don't want to run that statement because, you know, I'm sure in, in, you know, the following lessons, I will be making use of the data in this table. So I don't want to have to recreate it again, but I assure you, if you ran this statement, it would delete all the, the rows in the users table. And there you go. Cool. So now you should have a good grasp on how to do the four most important operations in SQL. Let me finish off with one more. Let me do select star from users. And this time, instead of hitting the semicolon, I'm going to put the where clause in there again, just to show you that the where clause is very dynamic. It can be plugged into pretty much all of the different uh, operations, except for when you're inserting. Let me think, is that a true statement? Well, maybe not. that could be a more advanced topic. So let me just say that the where statement can be applied to all four operations, but here it is applied to the select statement. So I can say select star from users and I can say where username equals T page. And then you see it only returns one row. Or I can say select star from users where let's say, well, let's say a username equals T page one. Okay. So let's do something where it does not match. So you see it says empty set. It is not able to return anything because there's no match for the where statement. So it tried to filter. It could not filter it properly. So that is the result. Or you could say where user ID equals two. And again, don't put, remember two is an int here. Don't put it in quotes that will give you, well, I'll show you, or rather it doesn't give you an error. I'm a little bit uh, surprised by that. I'm very used to it giving me an error whenever I put in a, a string equivalent for an int, but perhaps it did some casting there behind the scenes that I wasn't aware of. So there you go. But on a normal scenario, in a normal scenario, you wouldn't want to do it that way. You would want to actually exclude the uh, quotes for it to return something properly. But as you can see, it works in both cases. I don't think that'll work when you actually perform an insert, unless something has changed in this version of MySQL that I was not aware of. Who knows? In any case, there you go. That's the where clause. And that is the update and delete statements that we've learned today. Hopefully that's a good uh, tutorial for you guys and you understand all of that very well. So then we can move on to our next lesson. So I will see you there. Can't wait for it. Take care.